Hi there friends, welcome to another video about landscape regeneration or regen agriculture here at the D'Antonia Bruderhof community. We'll be joining Johannes Meyer, our farm manager, for an introduction to some of the projects we've been doing over the years here to improve soil health and water retention and other aspects of our landscape. By way of explanation, this was a video he and I put together a couple weeks ago. Johannes was invited to be a guest presenter at the Mennonite World Conference, which was held in Indonesia in early July, and this was his contribution. So, hope you enjoy it, and thanks for watching. Please drop us a comment and let us know what you're doing in your life and in your landscape to improve this world. Greetings from D'Antonia, Bruderhof community in uh, northern New South Wales. It's a real joy to join all of you for a few minutes and share some of uh, what we've been doing here at D'Antonia in the way of landscape restoration. So D'Antonia is a Bruderhof community with about 200 brothers, sisters, and children. Uh, we've been here for about 22 years. We have about 2,300 hectares here, mostly grazing country, some cropping. It's been quite a journey uh, of discovery and of uh, reconnecting with the old ways of managing land uh, to its full potential. We feel really that this is part of our Christian witness, part of the uh, obedience to God's commands to care for the land, to care for His creation. And when we do that, then the creation and the land looks after us, provides us healthy food, so that, that's a really important uh, journey that we've been on. Today we're standing down by our creek. Uh, you can see behind me the water's flowing through. We recently had a big rain and uh, the uh, properties up, upstream have uh, given us some more topsoil, a bit of erosion going on. But I just want to tell you a little bit about our story. Uh, when we bought this property in 1999, it was significantly degraded already. It was a mixed farming cropping enterprise. And we came down to Australia with a vision to reintegrate with agriculture and to work with the land. And we began that journey really by following conventional practice, uh, using herbicides, tillage, uh, a lot of cropping. But we couldn't make any money at that, and we could see that the landscape was continuing to degrade and not improve. Um, often this creek would be empty. There'd be no water flowing through it. There was erosion throughout the catchment. The pastures were not productive and the crops uh, were not paying their bills. So about five years into that, we, we really stopped and considered what is a responsible way to go forward with this land? How, how can we do a better job of looking after it? And really also, what kind of a landscape are we gonna pass on to our children? And what's gonna support them? Tied into all of that, of course, too, was the looming issue of climate change. Uh, which we're now experiencing across the world. And uh, what about the way we manage our landscape can mitigate against some of the challenges that climate change bring? So how to restore landscape? That is a, a question with many layers of answers. And it's taken us many, many years to learn what we have been able to learn, and I'm sure there's much more to learn still. But to boil it down, we've come to really understanding that we have to work with nature, with the laws of nature, with the way God set it up to work. The cycles of fertility, the cycles of water, the cycles of energy, the sun's energy, and then down into the soil, the life in the soil, the biology, the way that plants and soil biology work together. All these things are important, but really we didn't know any of that at the beginning. But we began by doing what we could, and, and the first tool that we applied to our landscape was grazing management, which replicates the way that grazing animals interact with predators and are kept in tight bunches, moving through the landscape, doing pretty aggressive grazes, but then long rest periods. And by using this grazing management tool, you can actually restore grasslands and restore diversity, restore ecology. That was one tool. And we applied that first in a small area and then in bigger and bigger areas across the property. And that was successful to a degree. However, that was not enough. We also met a, a gentleman by the name of Peter Andrews who taught us about 
water in the landscape, the importance of retaining water in the landscape, because Australia, is, as you may know, is a land of extremes. It's either very dry or very wet. And the landscape and the functions in the landscape work to hold that water in place. But what's happened over the past 150 years in Australia is that through mismanagement, those functions have been destroyed and vast amounts of very valuable topsoil have been washed out to sea. Fertility has been decreased, soil carbon has been decreased, and these things have had a huge impact on uh, farming viability in this country. So we worked hard at learning and understanding what it meant to restore water in the landscape. And that starts at the very top of the hills and moves down through the, through the slopes right down to the creek as we see it here. And um, the connection between the creek and the water and the floodplain. The level of the water in the creek actually extends out into the floodplain and the grass roots can access that water and continue to productively uh, grow. The next chapter in our discoveries was around soil biology and plant diversity. And if you think about nature, nature never exists in uh, monocultures, but nature is always diverse. There is millions of species of plants, animals, insects, birds, and all these things play an important role in the natural world. And so we realized that through the use of herbicides, through the use of monocultures, we had severely degraded our landscape. And it was really on life support. Um, and you could almost look like, look at uh, the chemical fertilizers we've used as drugs um, that would stimulate the soil for a very short time, but then cause long-term damage. Uh, much like drugs do in our bodies. So th those are the things that, that we have applied to our landscape have been very successful. Uh, the land has come alive. We're seeing increasing birds, insects, pl animals, many more plant species. And it's heading in the right direction, but we're still really uh, in the beginning stages of full property recovery. I think too, and I think about this as a Christian, that when one looks at nature and, and the wonder of nature and the way God has created it, the way that the plants and the soil biology, the animals, the birds, they all need each other. They all work together to achieve this community. Isn't that the way we humans should be working together to achieve God's plan on this earth? And um, yes, we do have a 2300 hectare property. It's a, it's a big place, um, but each of you viewing this, you know, whether you have a, a window box of flowers or a small acreage or a backyard can apply these principles in some way and increase, you know, the, the health of the, the ecosystem uh, wherever you are. And considering the challenges we face in our world, as I mentioned before, with climate change, with more extreme weather events, working with nature and allowing nature to build the cycles of fertility and res resilience are going to help with that challenge. And each of us can do our part to achieve that. A passage that comes to mind when I think of landscape restoration is out of Jeremiah, where Jeremiah counsels to look for the ancient way, the good way, and walk in it. Walk in that good way and good things will flow from that. And I think in my work, you know, wood landscape, I also realized that of the few things we have managed to learn, which we are thankful for, there's so much more we don't know and so much more that is hidden in nature that is a gift from God. And, you know, going to Genesis, when God created this world, He said it is good and he charged us to care for it, to look after it. And that's what we need to do. It is good. And if we follow his way, if we walk in his path, then we'll fulfill his commandment and good things will flow from that. that that's what I believe. So it's been a real pleasure to spend a few minutes with you and thank you for that opportunity. Of course, here at D'Antonio, we always welcome visitors. So any of you that find yourselves in Australia, please come visit us and look forward to meeting you. All the best.